Now is the turn for the spinal nerves. And the spinal nerves were, of course, they're coming out, they're exiting from the spinal cord. And instead of 12 pairs, in here we have 31 pairs. But don't worry, we're not going to learn them all. Now, how are we, are we going to name these uh, spinal nerves? They receive, the name they receive is, uh, depends of the point of issue from the vertebral column. So remember in the vertebral column, we, we have seven cervical vertebrae, 12 thoracic, five lumbar, five fused sacral uh, vertebrae, and three to five coccygeal vertebrae. So we are going to have eight pairs, I'm gonna explain this in a little while, eight pairs of cervical nerves, and then the same numbers of uh, nerves as we have uh, vertebrae, 12 pair of thoracic vertebrae, 12 pair of uh, thoracic nerve, 5 of lumbar vertebrae, 5 of lumbar nerves, and so forth. Now, why do we have uh, these uh, 7 cervical vertebrae but 8 cervical nerves? And this is easy to explain. So, we have, let me see if I can use this, maybe it's too little, but I have here, it is. I'm going to put here uh, C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, and I'm going to grab another color, and this is T1, T2, T3, and so forth, okay? Uh, I don't have to label that, right? So we we'll start here in C1. I'm going to draw now the nerves in red, okay? C1 exits from or uh, superior to the body of C1, the vertebrae C1. The second, this is the spinal nerve C1. So this is the spinal nerve and oh, nerve. And this is our the vertebrae. C2 exits above C2. C3 exits above C3. C4 exits above C4, C5 above C5, C6 above body, uh, the body of the cervical vertebrae, C7 above the body of the uh, seventh cervical vertebrae, but C8 exits below or inferior to the body of C7. So that's, I think, is an important vertebrae to label. So this is C7, and this in green is T1, T2, T3, and so forth. So we keep naming the spinal nerve. So now it's below T1 is T1. Below T3 is, I'm sorry, below T2 is T2, below T3 is T3, and the rest is the same, okay? So only on the cervical uh, region, the spinal nerves exit above or superior to the body of the corresponding uh, vertebrae, okay? When we uh, reach C7, actually, when we reach, um, starting the thoracic uh, region, the nerves exit below the body of that vertebrae, okay? So T1 exits inferior to T1, okay? And that's why we have eight uh, spinal nerve, cervical spinal nerve, but only seven uh, cervical vertebrae, okay? Now, <sighs> yes, we're going back to this. One more time, I don't, how many times have we described that picture, guys? One more time, okay? We start. I need you to have this clear. The receptors, free nerve endings of sensory neurons. They're detecting, let's say, touch in the forearm. They send this information using sensory fibers, okay? Uh, these are dendrites, okay? The, all of that information goes in this direction, okay, until it reaches the cell body. Okay, and the cell body are located in the dorsal root ganglia, 
which are located right at the level of the interver intervertebral foramen on lateral to the spinal cord. Okay, the body, I mean, from here, from the cell body of the sensory neuron uh, emerges an axon, right? And the axon sends that sensory information towards, and this is, remember, only one direction way, towards the, uh, the posterior horn of the spinal cord. Now in there, it will, or not, meet an interneuron, okay? And that interneuron, or directly the sensory neuron, will synapse with a motor neuron. Now, the body of the motor neuron are located on the anterior gray horn of the spinal cord, is gray, so bodies. The axons of these neurons exit following the ventral route, so these are motor, okay? Uh, okay, here it is. These are motor axons and these are sensory axons. Um, and exit following this way until it reaches the target organ, in this case, the muscle, the, uh, what is that? It might be the biceps brachii, okay? That's how it flows all the information. Now, in here, this is the spinal cord. It contains both uh, sensory, blue sensory fibers and red motor uh, fibers. Now, these spinal nerve and the sensory, uh, I'm sorry, in the root ganglion, the dorsal root ganglion, are at the level of the intervertebral foramen of the vertebral column. Medial to that is where we're going to find the roots. So the dorsal roots contain sensory fibers, only sensory fibers. The ventral root contains only motor fibers. Lateral, in here, they kind of fuse, okay, or, or merge together uh, to form a nerve. So a nerve is a bundle of all of these axons. It contains sensory and, um, and motor axons. So all the spinal nerves, unlike the cranial nerves, all of them are mixed nerves. All of them contain sensory and motor information. Remember, cranial nerves can be sensory or motor or mixed. In here, all of them are mixed. And they're going to supply all the somatic region of the posterior and anterior parts of your body below the neck, okay? Remember, the head and the neck is supplied by the cranial nerves. Ready. Now, each of these spinal nerves is going to branch. Can you see? Now we have two branches. Ah, yes, green for fun. This is the spinal nerve, and see that it branches, woof and woof, okay? One is pointing, this is posterior, right? Everything in here says dorsal. So one is a posterior or dorsal ramus, and the other one is the anterior or ventral ramus, okay? Let's describe those structures in here. Now, look at this. Okay, we have, this is the body of the vertebrae. It looks like this is a thoracic vertebrae, right? Look at the spinous process. And in here we have the spinal cord. This is where we're gonna have the intervertebral foramen between the two, the superior and the inferior vertebrae. At this level, see that I can see the dorsal root ganglion, and this section is the spinal cord, the, I'm sorry, the spinal nerve, okay? So see that medial uh, to the intervertebral foramen, okay? Uh, we're gonna find the spinal cord. These are posterior, right? So dorsal roots containing sensory fibers, motor fibers in the uh, ventral roots. Now, the, sen the spinal nerve, as I said, branches into one thin posterior or dorsal ramus and one thick anterior or ventral ramus, okay? Now, the ventral ramus can either form intercostal nerves in the thoracic region or form nerve plexuses. What is that? What is that? Okay, look, all of these, these 
Okay, this is the spinal cord, right? These structures in here, can you see them? Those are the dorsal root ganglia. So lateral to that, all of that are, um, uh, gosh, are um, spinal nerves. And then I stopped because I forgot to mention one thing. I'm sorry. I'm going to go back one single minute. Okay. The dorsal, I didn't explain the dorsal ramus, that's why. The dorsal ramus is thin and is going to supply or innervate the muscles of the posterior neck and your back. That's it. That's what uh, the functions of all the dorsal ramus. Now, the ventral ramus, they can either follow, you know, be individually located, you know, this happens only on the um, thoracic region and they form the intercostal nerves or they can group together in plexuses and which are this now we're coming okay now again spinal cord these are the uh, dorsal root ganglia and in here they're showing me only yes the ventral ramus Okay, they remove the dorsal ramus. Remember that goes behind here and only gives the, mus the ah, nerve supply to the muscles of the neck. Well, muscles and skin, okay? Of the neck, all the somatic organs of the neck and posterior neck and back. So it's a little area. So ventral ramus is thicker because we have the rest, a bigger area to innervate. That's the skin muscles, joints, all the somatic organs of the ventral and lateral aspect of the trunk, uh, thoracic and abdominal regions, and the forelimbs, okay? So in here we can see only the, door, uh, the ventral ramus, and the ventral ramus can, ramus is plural, in the thoracic region, which is about, yes, here, Okay, only the thoracic spinal nerves, when they exit, they follow this cool, organized, segmented anatomy. So they run, uh, they're located through, in actually within the costal groove. Remember that groove on the inter internal aspect of the rib, on each rib. So there is where the, uh, these nerves are located and they form the intercostal nerves. And you might remember, if we put together the lab with this, that the intercostal nerves innervate, of course, in muscles, intercostal muscles, and muscles of the, and skin of the thoracic region, but also the abdomen. They uh, uh, follow this direction down to innervate the muscles of uh, the abdominal muscles, external oblique, internal oblique, transversus abdominis, rectus abdominis, okay, anteriorly. The rest, those are the, inter the ones that form intercostal nerves. The rest of the spinal nerves, superior and inferior to this thoracic region, they see how they group together, see, and they form plexuses, plexuses, actually. Okay, and we have four main plexuses. These are the level of the neck, that's the cervical plexus. This is the brachial plexus. This is the lumbar plexus, and this is the sacral plexus. And mostly, they are going to innervate the cervical and the brachial, the upper limb, and the lumbar and the sacral, the lower limbs. So that's what we're going to describe in the next uh, um, video how the, only the main branches of these plexuses. Look in this fresh cadaver. Uh, well, it's not fresh, it's dissected. But in this dissection, how all of this, all of these spinal nerves, intermingles, spinal nerve in there, that's a plexus, okay? And we're gonna describe a few of these nerves that you should be familiar with already if you have already studied that on the lab. So see you in the next video.